Hey guys, it's Universe. In today's video, I'm going to be providing you guys a guide on how to survive more within War Thunder, specifically top tier. Also, I apologize for the quality in these clips as they came from my Twitch streams, twitch.tv slash MrUniverse. We're going to be covering three main points in this video, which in my opinion are extremely effective, as I have achieved an 8 kill to death ratio in the F-16A MLU at 1,700 kills to only 200 deaths. I'm not attempting to flex or make others look bad, I'm just stating stats wise I'm a high value player. The three main points in this video are the three S's. These points can work with any top tier jet. Stay low, stay fast, and stay unspotted. What I mean by point one, staying low, is that radar missiles aka semi-active radar homing missiles are the most used and most feared missiles in top tier, as most players are still unaware of how easy it is to dodge radar missiles. In War Thunder, the radar system has a targeting issue where if the enemy is too low to the ground, the radar will just switch from being directly on them to being below them. This affects missiles, as they target the middle of the radar track, and not the actual target it's locked onto, unlike IR missiles do. Therefore, you can abuse this targeting issue to slam radar missiles into the ground while not having to notch and lose speed or take any damage whatsoever. In the background will be a clip of me displaying this targeting issue to kill an F-14 Tomcat from an insane high off bore side angle by simply staying low near the trees and pulling up at around 1.2 kilometers from the missile's range. I dodge it every time and get an easy kill. This targeting issue allows you to no longer have to take chaff countermeasures, which means you'll be you'll have more flares for IR missiles like the AIM-9L. There's only one missile the radar targeting issue only slightly affects as its explosive mass is so large that it can still somewhat damage your aircraft. This missile being the Phoenix missile carried by the F-14 Tomcat. But don't fear, there's an easy fix to this. When staying low to make the Phoenix hit the ground, you want to turn slightly at a 30 to 40 degree angle from the missile. Once the missile is around 3 to 4 kilometers away, you can then proceed back towards the missile and then angle again 30 to 40 degrees the opposite way. The missiles won't be able to pull as hard, and it will still hit the ground and leave your jet undamaged. I'll have a video linked below by YouTuber Seekerhead at, on dodging radar missiles at higher altitudes, as my discussion provides context of lower altitudes. Staying low in top tier is essential, as it lets you be the first person into the battle and allows you to beat radar missiles with ease. Now on to point two, staying fast. Some of you may hear this point and skip straight to the next point as you think you know how to stay fast and avoid a furball, but in most cases you may get distracted by a lot of players in one area which will make you feel that you have to engage straight away to get any kills for the match. This couldn't be farther from the truth, as there are lots of players who will side climb or be late to taking off and if you engage a furball too early into the match you may find yourself trapped in that furball and becoming tunnel vision which can get you killed with ease. When you stay low, stay fast, and stay unspotted, you become almost stealthy and a demon to be reckoned with to other players. Point 2 and 3 coexist with each other as you never want to become part of a furball, but you want to pick kills on enemies who are not paying attention and are planning on joining the furball. The spotting system in War Thunder is so extremely bad that you can get sometimes within 1 to 2 to 3 kilometers before the game spots you on the minimap. Use this issue to your advantage and pick off unsuspecting players with your missiles. You may be asking, what if I'm stock universe? Well, in that case, you'll have to just accept that it'll be even harder to gain RP, but it's not impossible. I have gotten a 5.5 KD in the J35A, which is at 9.7, and has no flares against AIM-9Ls and R60Ms. You may not be able to stay fast or stay low with no flares, but you can sure as hell pack a punch and be useful to your team. It's all about positioning within War Thunder. I'll also have a video linked below on the J35A. In top tier, my playstyle, which I call flanking the crescent, most players in top tier go to the left side after taking off, which causes a crescent-like shape in where the enemies are positioned. This also applies to your team, but you're just taking advantage of this and getting behind the enemies without them knowing. Sometimes when rushing from the left side, you will spot enemies who are looking directly at you and are getting ready to launch a radar missile at you. This is where point one comes in handy. Don't let the pressure of a missile heading straight to your face cause you to panic and slam into the ground. or go too high and allow the missile to hit you with ease. Stay calm and stay prepared, just in case someone else fires another radar missile as well. Now that I've got these points covered in the best of my abilities, I will now play two games back to back, no re-records, just going straight in and explaining my process through and through. I'm not perfect, everyone makes mistakes, and if I happen to make any mistakes, I will point them out. But without further ado, let's get into this. 
And here we are into our first game. In the F-16A MLU, I'm currently rushing left side and staying low. I'm also using my radar as a complete ESP, almost, and being able to spot enemies from major distance, up to 72 kilometers. As you can tell, I noticed multiple F-14 Phoenixes being shot off, so I immediately reverted back towards the ground just in case any of them did get shot off early and I never spotted them coming towards me. Lucky for me though, I don't think any of them did, so I maintained my radar lock and keep my focus on this enemy F-4. I get another radar lock from up above, and this is where I make my first mistake, but it's okay because my positioning and my awareness of the minimap and other players around me allows me to go up high, even without chaff. I get this first kill, and then I look around and notice that there's a couple players nearby, and it's probably not safe that I stay up at high altitudes. This is where I dump my nose back towards the ground and get into a safer position. Making decisions like that is completely normal and okay to do, you just have to be completely aware of your surroundings as you never want to get caught off guard with a radar missile. We're ahead of the enemy. As I flank the Crescent, there's an F4E that goes straight for my furball and gets caught off guard with an AIM-9L. The other one unfortunately misses, but that's okay. I continue staying fast and avoiding staying in the furball as you can spot all my teammates are in one area. I never want to stay in that area because otherwise the enemies will spot me as well too. I spot an F4J off in the distance. Looks like he's doing flanking of his own. Shoot an AIM-9L off and it misses unfortunately. I'm going to re-engage back into the furball hoping that most of the enemies won't be paying attention and are completely tunnel vision. Aim 9L off on the MiG-29, but unfortunately he does die. I spot an F4J at this point, and I look behind me and see another F4E. There's only a couple players left in this match, so I'm no longer fearing uh, staying in the furball. I pop my air brakes, and I immediately pull as hard as I possibly can. Note that what I'm doing here is not very smart, but in this point in the match, it's okay to do, as there's not many players left. The F4J is approaching, so I go low, just in case he decides to fire, fire off any last missiles at me. He flares too late and dies to an aim right now because he tunnel visioned onto another player trying to get a radar missile off. Pop a blind hunt, and I spot the last player. It's a Sukhoi 22, and he's all by himself after just bombing. I whiff all my shots, but luckily the mountain doesn't miss, so he slams straight into it. That's the first game. I'm going to be swapping jets now, as I don't feel that the F-16 has many flaws and allows me to find any errors in my playstyle. I'm going to be continuing on to the MiG-29 now. Now on to game 2. Unfortunately, this is an EC map enduring confrontation, which means the map is significantly larger than normal maps. Luckily for me, I am in the MiG-29, so I have uh, R-27 ERs, which are phenomenal on EC maps. For those who are wondering why I'm full afterburning on an EC map, considering that the MiG-29 dumps its fuel insanely, what I do is a method called first stage afterburner. What you do is you go to controls within your settings, you select throttle aircraft as mouse wheel, 
And what that allows you to do is when you're full after burning, if you scroll down once to 100% throttle and then scroll up once back to WEP, this will cause your afterburner to be in first stage, which uses less fuel but less power, but more power than 100%. I'm going to be displaying also another strange issue that is awesome with ER. Due to its guidance system, you can shoot off at R27 ER into the sky and then leave it for around one minute or so, and then when an enemy gets closer, you just relock the enemy. This will cause the R27, R, the R27 ER to retract onto the opponent. This makes them unaware as they believe that since they just got locked, the missile won't be coming to them anytime soon. As this F-14A is going to find out, my missile is definitely very close to him. And there's my first kill. With the R-27ER, you can do incredible things with it. I shoot off another ER at an F4J, but he's really low to the ground, so it just dodges immediately. I shoot off an R60 at a high bore sight, and unfortunately he's so tunnel vision at trying to shoot me that he just takes the missile to the face. I lose my second ER, unfortunately, due to him being positioned extremely well, but it doesn't matter as I have my team still with me and two people are dead now. There's an F-16 that's extremely close to me, which I did not expect. He must have came down from the canal area and completely caught me off guard. I ask for backup from my team and start flaring. The, my radar's going off, which signals that this is a radar missile coming at me, and from rear aspect, even though I don't have chaff, all I need to do, do is stay low. This will cause the missile to still hit the ground, even from rear aspect. My MiG-29 comes in to save me and I give him a thank you, and then I continue back to helping the team. I look up, and I spot another jet from an extremely far distance. I'm gonna stay low, just in case he shoots off a radar missile at me, and ironically, he does the that exact thing. Because I'm so low to the ground, the missile dodges every time, and I go up to see if I can get a missile shot on him, but 18 of my team members are already firing at him. I'm going to be skipping a little bit more in this because it's an EC map, and I don't want to bore you guys with me flying around everywhere. I spot a jet in front of me as I'm continuing forward. And I'm not sure what jet he's in yet, but now I know, and now that I know that he's an F-14, I need to stay low and avoid getting hit by any radar missiles. He's too close now, so any missiles that he does fire off me would need to do extreme genes to be able to hit me. He dies into a head-on because he's dumb and decides that instead of avoiding any gunshots at him, he just stays moving in the same direction. I'm going to be continue to skipping this forward as I don't want to stay here forever. At this point, there's only one enemy left, and I notice from the bottom right corner that the enemy is taking out ground targets. All I have to do is look on the map and see where all my friendly ground targets are, and all I have to do is ping those on the map to let my team know that he's somewhere in these areas. And lucky for me, my second ping was correct, and my team was able to spot him and head straight towards his direction. Unfortunately, I don't get the kill, but my team does, so we win this match, and that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope that you guys can learn something from this. Making mistakes is normal, and it's part of the learning process. Uh, without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I don't know what video I'll be making next, but it will be coming soon.